Man, I couldn't believe it when I seen this on social media, man. And I'll link this article to the description right now. It's just a rumor. But 50 Cent is supposedly closing in on a deal to buy the majority of Ja Rule's masters, okay? And I'm going to school you on, you know, the significance of that. Um, most of his major hits are with Def Jam, according to this article from the late 90s and early 2000s. That owns his masters and... You know, we know that 50 and Job Beef go back, way back, you know, to, you know, stabbings and, and beefs and stuff and, and just, you know, street beefs. And, you know, Ja Rule and Irv Gotti, you know, was saying that, you know, 50 Cent was calling the feds on them, snitching on them, where they couldn't even, you know, touch him and get close to him. Um, 50, you know, the real Ja Rule career with, you know, with a few um, diss songs, man. Um, you know, a lot of wankster, he just was going hard on them. And anybody that was around and working with Ja, you know, Fat Joe, Jay the Kiss, he went at all of them. His whole MO coming out was, you know, built on destroying Ja Rule. And, um, you know, he destroyed Ja Rule. He made fun of Ja Rule doing R&B, you know, pop rap songs. And at the point in time, Ja Rule was the hottest artist or one of the hottest rap artists and pop rap artists, whatever you want to call them, on the planet. You know, what Drake was doing, Ja Rule was doing back then. He was the hottest artist out, you know, selling a lot of records and, you know, you know, doing big things. And, you know, 50 Cent, you know, snug up on the underground, did the power of, a, power of a dollar. I think it's one of his best tapes out there even to this day. Then, you know, immediately came attacking, attacking Ja on the 8 Mile um, soundtrack. Wankster, you know, continued to attack him. And then, you know, when he derailed Ja Rule's career, you know, Ja Rule said, you know, he wasn't paying 50 no attention. He was on the road doing shows, making dope music. And by the time he paid 50 any attention, it, it was too late. The beef was already won. He was already beat. And, um, you know, 50, you know, eventually went on to be a high artist. But he ended up, you know, doing 21 Questions, Candy Shop. And I say that because he stole Ja Rule's sound in some people's opinion. You know, similar to what Aaron Hall did to R. Kelly. He stole his style, and, you know, he made it his own and made it better, you know, in some people's opinion. And ever since, from their little street beef, ever since then, they've been having beef, you know. And all these years later, you see other rappers that settle their beef, buried the hatchet, you know, let bygones be bygones. You know, 50 Cent said today, the beef ain't going to be over until one of them ain't on this planet no more. So, um, like last week or last couple weeks, he bought 200 tickets to, you know, Ja Rule and Ashanti show. Just so the seats can be empty. Uh, he took a shot at him. Um, you know, when he was had to show up in Syracuse. And, you know, the Uber, he was late. He couldn't show up to the show, whatever happened. And they just been beefing back and forth on social media. And, um, you know, now he, you know, 50 Cent is, is, is rumored to be closing in on buying his masters. And the significance of buying his masters is the fact that every time he get a stream or every time the song is played on the radio or however it go or, or somebody want to use it for a commercial, the the hook the hook the the beat whatever part of the song you know it puts money in fifty cent pocket you know so you know he owns the songs that's the importance of masters and a lot of artists don't own their app masters if you listen to most of my music entertainment videos and I have a playlist for that playlist for most of all the content I drop so you can categorize and see what you like I talked about back in the day Ray Charles owning all his masters and and and, and James Brown owning all his masters like how do we go from you know, Sam Cooke, all these dudes, you know, holding all their masters, cutting the middleman out. James Brown in the 70s had a jet, a private jet. You know, he he was the businessman. He 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 uh he promoted his own show, did the tours, you know, you know, um made his own money. Ray Charles owned all his masters. All that money goes into your pocket. That's significant. And a lot of these artists are are selling their masters for for um for uh, money, for for a little bit of nothing, front money, you know what I'm saying, you know, advanced money, they selling their masters for a couple thousand, not even the millions of dollars, so, you know, the record label is owning your music, you know, they own the song, they own the beat, they own your words, and they get paid off of that, and you getting a, you getting a couple dollars, you know, you might be getting the money right now off rip, but what they getting on the back end, they gonna, they, they kids, kids gonna be eating off that money, you know what I'm saying? And and you get so far removed from 
older artists, you know, knowing the game and and now, you know, rap came in the late 70s, 80s, and a lot of artists, a lot of these rappers got got did in wrong. A lot of these music acts, R&B acts got did in wrong. Uh um TLC, um New Edition, plenty of rappers got effed over their money. NWA got meffed over their money. Um and you know, obviously, you know, Ja Rule, you know, he got effed over his masters too. Suge Knight had all the masters to death row. All of them. All Eyes on Me, Doggy Style, Chronic, the Doggy uh, Dog Pound album. He had all those masters. All of them. He went to jail in the 90s, I think, late 90s, and Interscope stole all his masters from Suge Knight. Suge Knight should be a billionaire right now. He on all that music. If somebody wanted to sample the music, they had to pay Suge Knight. All the music he on. Anybody want to do a, you know, play, you know, use the beat for a commercial, they had to pay Suge Knight. Every time they spent that record, streamed it, they had to pay uh, Suge Knight. And that's what 50 going. They say he's buying Ja Rule Masters for the neighborhood of seven figures. Millions of dollars. A lot of his hit songs. And, you know, people probably wonder why Ja Rule don't buy his masters back. Ja Rule probably don't have a million dollars to spend on his masters. Because you buy the masters, ain't like that money going to come in like that. Because it's going to come into royalty form. So he get royalties probably. You know, he get a percentage, you know, of royalties paid. But he don't get the, the, the majority. The majority of them royalties go back to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the record label. And, you know, it's sad. It's pathetic. And hopefully most artists can learn that to get your, you know, recoup, recoup your advance, man. You know. Invest it on your royalties. Get you a lawyer. If your family got to scoop up a couple dollars to get you a lawyer to read through these music contracts, you do that. You know, because in the grand scheme of things, that little money that you get now, you going to blow through that. These dudes buying jewelry, watches, trying to look rich and don't own their own music. I seen Amigos last year flying commercial, flying a commercial flight. You want the hottest selling rap, uh, rap, rap groups in the, in the land, in the world. And you riding the commercial flight, and you got all this jewelry on, all this ice on, you you doing all, but you flying the commercial flight on ESPN talking about King of LA, you know. But like I said, this beef ain't gonna be settled, man. Can't nobody mend this beef between Fifty and Ja. And at the end of the day, they both old, they both matured, they both got families and kids, and Fifty ain't gonna stop, you know. Fifty, you can see why Fifty, you know, somebody put nine shots in Fifty. It's, it's no, it's no, it's no. It's no joke, you know. It's no wondering why. It's no where's finding why though. You know, he's childish, he's petty, he's arrogant, no loyalty to nobody. He'll tell your whole business he's the male Wendy Williams. You know, and that's how you stay relevant. You know? That's how you stay relevant. At the end of the day, you know, Ja Rule did say the other day that he wouldn't pull up. Like at, at some point you gotta pull up on him. You know, at some point you gotta pull up on him. You got to put hands on them, period. Can you do that? Who knows? You claim you used to beat him up. You claim you used to, you stab, they, you know, allegedly he stabbed 50 up and all this stuff. At this point, man, ain't no bygones be bygones. I'm pulling up and I ain't even letting you know I'm coming. At this point, he owns you. He owns your music. He owns your voice. He owns your words. The songs that you're performing, getting tour money right now, a little bit of tour money, going. he own that. He owns you. He gonna let you know. It ain't like you go to Def Jam and tell them, "Oh, I got a million dollars to pay you," or uh, so so to keep my masters. Well, you ain't got that right now, you know. And he ain't gonna let you stop. Somebody got to stop fifty and bust him in his mouth. He been shot nine times. They ain't did it enough. So you gonna have to embarrass him, humiliate him. You know, for job rule, maybe gonna be a man, or you gonna just turn another cheek and let it go. You know, over the years they let it go. It was quiet. And now it started back again for what? Dudes is grown, you know, had their career, 50 career and flaked out, Ja Rule career and flaked out. You know, you'll think they'd sit down, but this is this is deeper than rap. This was always deeper than the rap beef. You know, you had Irv Gotti and Ja Rule saying that, you know, they would jump on 50 and 50 would get restraining orders from them and, and they had paperwork and said 50 was calling the feds on them and stuff of that nature. He was a snitch and all this. And, and, and I, I wouldn't put it past him. 50 over here dry snitching, spilling tea on Floyd, dry snitching on everybody else and, and making fun of his own crew. It, 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 was, that, would that shock you? 
That shock you. 50 got uh, uh, plenty of snitch tendencies. A bunch of them. A bunch of them. Goss, he, he's the male Wendy Williams on social media. Bunch of them. So it, it wouldn't shock me. You know, if Ja Rule and Irv Guy was telling the truth about how he put paperwork, how he was filing police restraining orders and calling the feds on them, it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me at all, man. But at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, if I'm Ja Rule, I'm pulling up, man. Straight up. I'm not leaving no one coming. He had a book signing or, or some effing vodka signing. I'm pulling up wherever he at. Detroit, Cincinnati, Indiana, L.A., Queens, Manhattan, you know, Baltimore, D.C., Miami, Orlando, North Carolina. I'm pulling up. I'm pulling up. And I'm going to bring a camera with you to show what's going to happen. You know, but, hey, like I said, I'm going to link to the article in the description. I thought it was funny that he taking it this far to own this man's voice and his words and his music. He do that, man. This dude is going to be petty trolling him, man. Super petty trolling him, man, but. You know, it's good fella sports TV. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, man. I got plenty of content. Um, you know, we do a lot of boxing, do NBA, NFL. I'm gonna do this Duke Zion Williamson, uh, Kentucky game review as well, a little bit later. Uh much blessed to all the brothers. We on Facebook, Twitter. Also, you can email me business inquiry sponsorships. Uh you got video requests, you can hit me up on Twitter. That link's in the description. Join our Facebook group. Also want to make a donation, that link's in the description as well. Salute one time for the one time we're gonna continue to grind and hold it down. Don't forget I put the link into the description. We gone.